Hello, everyone, and welcome to the May Parks and Waterfront meeting uh, for Community Board 3. Uh, most of us have been on a variety of Zoom meetings, so I will not go over all the rules and regs for attending and for speaking at the meeting, but I will say we typically allow for committee members to speak first on an item, and if you'd like to speak, to raise your hand. Um, first up, the minutes were sent out. Uh, if there are any corrections or uh, if you see any issues, please let me know. Otherwise, they are deemed approved. Okay, Ryan, can you do a roll call for attendance, please? Yep. Trevor Holland? Yes, present. Uh, Kay Webster? Yes. Brian Gillum? Yes. David Adams? Yes. Yaron Altman? Yes. Harlan Chan? Yes. Catherine Freed? Yes. Valentina Jones? Yes. Robin Chattel? Yes. Daniel Tano? Yes. Josephine Velez? Yes. Troy Velez? Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, first up on the agenda is the Parks Manager Report. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, so update on Tompkins. Officially, as of Monday, we shut down the bathroom. The building went under construction. A, a fence went up, but we have porta stands in the park. Um, we have two regular uh, uh, units and one ADA unit for, for the public. Um, we have operational hours from 6 in the morning to 6 p.m. Um, so far, we've been dealing with some kind of some issues, but minor in comparison with what I expected. Um, the district also received their summer staffing. We were going to receive three supervisors, one APSW and three CPWs. They will be scattered throughout the district to help manage um, all the sites. Um, we also received a second tour, which will help us. They will, they will be working from 1230 to 9. They'll be dealing with a late garbage run. Also, we have them doing a mobile uh, restroom cleaning. They will be going to every restroom in the district, re restocking all the toilet paper, soap, but also cleaning at the same time. Um, we also have our water truck out. We started it today. We will be watering several places that don't have irrigation. Um, so we have two. We have a, we have a, a, a power wash that we're going to use as a water truck and also as a gator with a water tank on the back of it. It's going to help us kind of kind of get to areas that we didn't get to last year that, that were very problematic with not having any kind of any watering. So we're trying to get ahead of it. It's worked out well today. They went out, they typically will go out late evenings the water spot. So we did it Saturday D today. There were no issues. It worked out really, really well, which I'm happy about. Um, lastly, Steve Simon wants to look to have a community input meeting regarding the Allen Pike malls and also Saturday D with the potential construction. That's my update. All right. Thank you. Just two quick questions. You say he he's he's looking to have input. What does that mean? So he just, I guess, input with either, I believe, with design of, or or just discussing about where the money for both areas that will potentially go over the construction. I'm not sure when, but that's what he wants to have a discussion about. So I think I'm he just wants to be to... on the June agenda. Okay, that, that's I guess that's what I wanted to hear. So he wants that yeah. to be on the June agenda. Those two parts. Yes. Right. Correct. Quick question before I go to Susan. Just one thing, um, and this is out of your district, but I know you relay the information. At, at Pier 35, what we're seeing is uh, the fights between the vendors. Uh, somebody recorded the, the vendors are driving on parkland to get behind the pier, and one of them uh, damaged the staircase because it had a trailer trying to bring the cart there and, there and then a fight ensued over the vendors. There are now about six or seven vendors within that half block area. Uh, so and I do have pictures from one of the community members who took took the pictures and shows the, the vendor who damaged the uh, 
uh, staircase. So if you can relay that information, and I'll, I'll send it in an email um, that we're having a problem. Yeah, if you can send getting, me the photos. Yeah, it's getting worse. Yeah, if you can send me the photos. Yeah, I'll speak to Jamal about it tomorrow morning. Sure, thanks. Susan? Um, I'm going to say as far as the vendors, that's I would also include sanitation because the vendors are now under that agency also, so they might be helpful. Um, really? Yeah, they just went, they used to be the police and they went to consumer affairs. Okay. Now they just sanitation. went to sanitation. We, we rotate. Um, so Jamel, I didn't think of this before, but it, there were needle, used needle containers in the bathrooms that are now under construction. Um, have we asked Housing Works to replace them anywhere else in the park? No, so we were, I was, I was going to wait to speak to Commissioner Perez about that. So I was thinking about possibly um, putting another one near the chess, ta chess table area over at Tompkins, uh -huh. but a larger one, because it looks like the, the activity over there is kind of going back to what it used to be. Um, I was here today and it was very heavily, being heavily used, unfortunately, um, okay. a lot of drug use. So um, I'll speak to the commissioner about that. Um, I also thought about possibly placing the, the baffle ones possibly at Seward. There's a, a issue there, but that's something that would have to be approved by the police. At where? Seward. Oh, at Seward. We have some at Seward. Oh, no, we don't have them in Seward. No, no, we don't have any at Seward. No, you I was here today. There was an issue of, uh, huh? You might get a different reaction down there, but we can try. Yeah, it's, it was the issue of uh, altercation. I was there late this afternoon, where um, um, someone under the influence was being uh, was being assaulted by a bunch of kids. Um, but typically, with my staff who clean who, because we recently reopened up the bathroom a week ago, we got power back in the building. I forgot to include that in my report. I'm sorry, but we got power back in the Seward Park, um, so we were able to open up the bathrooms. But it, it's it's there's a heavy drug use in the bathrooms. That's something that was prior to shutting it down due to having no power, that was a very problematic issue we had at Seward. Okay, so yeah, we should touch base on that. And I see um, Catherine has her hand up. Just one thing be after Catherine, we were going to discuss um, the park closing hours. Okay, no problem. Let's let say they go first. Okay, go ahead. No. Oh. Um, yeah. Hi, Jamal. Thank you so much for the for the water truck. As uh, some parks parts of the park have uh, I know Sarah D and I I think there is some trouble uh, in the Pike area to Pike Mall um, with no water sources. So thank you. That's huge. Um, it does seem kind of a hefty uh, combination of uh, Pike, Allen and Sarah D, but I, Sarah Roosevelt, but I assume that you'll work that out with Trevor and Susan. <laughs> No, I hear you, Kay. We've been talking about this for quite some time, and to hear that they want to both be on the June agenda, but we'll work something out. Yeah. I think we need to have a conversation with Steve, who generally tells us uh, very late as to when he wants things on the agenda, but we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah. I agree, because both Thanks. of those are topics on their own. And, and oh, one last, um, are we meeting in person at any time? And um... I'm wondering if they're just the the request, and maybe this is to you, Trevor and Susan, if any of these could be actually on site. Um, if we're going to be to look, I mean, I don't know what's being asked. Are we asked to input into design, or or just look at designs that have already been created? Okay, I, I, we'll 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 get okay. we'll discuss that. I'm just not sure right now. I think we're going to be Zoom next month, but I do hear you. We have no idea. It's when the mayor no longer extends the order of emergency emergency order, which I believe is tied into when city council is going to be voting on open restaurants because the temporary program is only allowed during emergency, and you know they haven't finalized their permanent program yet. So. I think if we watch the city council votes, that'll tell us more than anything else. Okay. As far as a, a site visit, um, you you wouldn't be, you know, usually we see, you know, a lot of um, PowerPoint that we won't be able to see for the future design is just something I thought of. Yeah, thank you. And um, um, 
I am really appreciative that the commissioner is moving forward on all of it. So thank you and thanks, Jamil. You're welcome. Susan, you wanted to, uh, to start or touch on the topic of TSP. Uh, sure. So three months ago, we finalized at the time there was question about the closing hours for Tompkins Square Park. We um, were successful in making sure the police um, continued or re restarted closing the gates um, at night, which they are doing now at 12. And at the time, um, there was confusion. Some um, signs said 1 o'clock, some said 12. We decided that it would be 12 and be revisited in three months. It's now three months. I don't know if um, anyone is here to um, speak about it because I know I was, at, I was particularly reminded to put it on the agenda. Um, the one input I will give is that I did ask the Ninth Precinct um, their input under closing hours since they're closing. And they said 12 is actually perfect because they have that shift comes in at 11.15, believe it or not. And by the time they get out to the park, it's midnight. And so that's their first thing they do. So the gates get locked and before they're involved in anything else. So it really works out well for the operation of closing. And so I don't, um, it looks like you have an attendee here with a hand up. I don't know if any of the board members have any issues or want to discuss it. Any member? I don't know who Susan is. Do you know who Susan is? I don't, Susan? but I just allowed her to talk. <laughs> okay. Susan, uh, I, and keep in mind, we'd like to be brief because this is just a uh, manager's update. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Sure. Great. Um, I just wanted to support the midnight closing to continue over the summer. It's been definitely a help. Uh, I and my neighbors and friends live right on the park, and we've really noticed that there's been an improvement. You know, we do see the police enforcing it uh, most nights, and uh, it's a big help in terms of the cutting down a little bit on the drug use, uh, cutting down a little bit on the people wandering over from other parks like Washington Square that closes and then continuing to party over here. Um, and of course, there's the noise and the trash. Um, the noise continues to be a bit of a problem. There doesn't seem to be much enforcement about the no amplified music. We occasionally see somebody from uh, the parks department come and shut somebody down. That's really, really loud. Um, uh, but we'd certainly like to see more of that, you know, later in the evening. Uh, we feel that midnight is quite late enough um, for all the excess noise and the people playing in the ball fields and and that sort of thing we'd like to be able to get up and go to work or open our windows you know and get a little fresh air so it's a big help to have it at midnight and big kudos to community board three for helping to make that happen thank you thank you for your comment uh Catherine. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo what Susan just said, that when this came up originally and I talked to a number of people in the area, they were all very supportive of the one people who lived right around the park were very supportive of the 12 o'clock closing. So I'll just say I think it's a good idea. And I think the community appreciates it. That's all. Can I respond to um, what Susan said about the concert or the no music? Sure. Um, so the police are actually working really hard on that because whenever I, I know whenever anyone emails me about it and I contact the police um, and they often have the names of their bands there and they're not permitted, they actually follow up and they take away any permits they have for daytime. Um, so what I would ask you to do is um, if the music is too loud or it seems like at an hour, like during the week or an hour where it may not be permitted, um, you can email me, but also um, call 311 and say there's an unpermitted concert. Um, there's been great effort to try 
and um, to, uh, to enforce that. And it, it is recent, in the last few months, they really have been trying to do that. Well, thank you. That's, that, I just wanna hear from Parks about the closing time. Is, is the 12 something that you're aware of or? You muted yourself, okay. So Trevor, we changed all the signs at all the access points. So all the consolidated signs say 12 o'clock. PD's done a great job of shutting down the park. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard minimal issues from my night staff that lock up the playgrounds and the bathrooms, at mm -hmm. the bathroom at that point. Um, but they, I mean, every once in a while you might get a day because it's probably also outside issues outside of Tompkins. It may not be locked, but on a regular basis, the park is locked without a problem. So on our end, it's been, it's been, to me, it's minimized a lot of issues that we have going on. Um, and I think it's worked out well for 12 o'clock midnight. Okay, that's good to hear. And I'm glad that it's working, but I would also move on uh, to the next agenda item, uh, which is ESCR update. Trevor, can, I, can, I, can I add one thing real quickly? Sure. Um, we just started our summer PA program. The Seward has a summer PA. Um, you mean having playground associates? Playground associates. Yeah. Um, we're having dif difficulty hiring. If anyone is in need of a job, if they could forward me their resume, I could give it to recreation so they could get interviews. Um, I think currently right now, they only have three people um, and they're looking to hire more. Okay. May I ask, have you contacted Lower East Side Employment? Uh, I don't really deal with that. Recreation does, but I could get them to do that. If you could have whoever that is um, email me, I'll put them in contact with each other. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. So we'll move on to the update for uh, ESCR and then BMCR. So I believe Desiree is on uh, and yes. Parker is on. If you could introduce yourself, I think one of you has screen share permissions. Perfect. Thanks, Trevor. Um, yes, Parker is going to share his screen. Perfect. Thank you, Parker. Um, and then I will start the introductions. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Desiree Gazzo. I'm with HNTB Lero, the program management construction management team for the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Um, we're here tonight with colleagues from um, GDC, um, some of our other sister agencies, um, and others from the PMCM, um, as well as Parker McClure, who is on our community engagement team, who has been presenting, I think, the past two CB3 meetings um, on specifically uh, PC and BMCR. Um, our community engagement uh, team is, is growing a bit with, you know, with the new projects. Uh, so we'll be kind of jointly presenting moving forward. Uh, so tonight we're going to start with the Eastside Coastal Resiliency updates, and then I'll hand it over to Parker to do the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Parallel Conveyance and BMCR. You can go to the next slide. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So uh, as, as I basically said, the overview for tonight is we'll go over the overview of contracts. Uh, we'll briefly touch upon PA2 construction progress, uh, PA1 construction progress, just a bit of environmental items, and then Parker will do the PC construction progress. Um, as always, we have our project area overview slide. Um, for those who may not come to all the CB3 meetings, um, but essentially the three contracts, PA1, PA2, and PC are all under construction currently. Um, for the overview of contract slide, much of the work um, is ongoing um, as we had reported at um, the last CB3 meeting. Um, we have some project updates for project area two. We had two new gates installed. Um, and then for project area one, uh, the house and street work is starting with the retaining wall there, but we have more information in the slides, which will come in just a bit. 
So for construction progress for project area two, which is in the northern portion of um, in the of the project, uh, for Asser Levy Playground, the flood wall and flood gate 18 is installed and that's open as it as it has been. Uh, the East 23rd Street intersection, um, just two weeks ago, um, gate 17 was installed. So that was an overnight installation. Um, due to the closure of the FDR kind of exit service road there. Um, and you could see the bottom right-hand corner is the photo of the installed uh, floodgate 17, um, again, in the evening. And then for Stuyvesant Cove Park, um, on that border between the northern portion and the southern portion, um, we installed gate 13, and that was um, a daytime installation um, that it was a, a huge gate. Um, and again, it's it's something you'll be able to see, uh, you can see now if you um, access via the, the access way to the ferry terminal, um, you could see that gate. So there's a lot um, moving forward in project area two. Uh, the anticipated reopen um, date for the northern portion of Stye Cove Park is the end of this month. Uh, so that's very exciting. And then, uh, Parker, if you want to go to the next slide, the anticipated reopening of the southern portion is um, the end of this year. So um, it is anticipated that by the end of this year, Stuyvesant Cove Park will be um, fully open. So we're really excited about that. Um, you could see uh, a lot of the work that's happening in the southern portion of the park from East 20th Street if you are heading to the ferry terminal. Um, again, that bikeway or the greenway between PA1 and PA2 is, um, is closed um, between the two areas, but that will um, but that will reopen, I think it's scheduled to reopen uh, sometime this summer. So we'll keep everyone posted um, about that. For project area one, the construction activities, as I mentioned, um, have mostly stayed the same. Um, the big change is the Houston Street overpass work that has started, um, and we have specific slides on that. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, work continuing um, around Montgomery Street under the FDR um, that is picking up there for the flood wall installation. Um, and then there is a bit of Con Ed electrical work at East 10th Street, and I have a slide on that as well. Um, so these are just a few construction photos. Uh, for those of you who join us at the community advisory group, um, you would have seen these, these photos, but we wanted to include them today. As well, um, this is the combi wall construction on the left hand side uh, that runs along the kind of the esplanade of the project. Again, another set of uh, sheet piles for the um, for the esplanade reconstruction. And then this is the wick drain installation to the right, which ultimately helps with the soil compaction. Um, so that way, then we could build on top of uh, compacted soil uh, the new the new park. So for the work that's going on at Houston Street, um, again, we're getting a start on the uh, Houston Street ramp demolition, which can start then the Houston Street retaining wall construction. Um, it's one of our kind of longer, um, longer items, so we'd like to get uh, a start on that. So there is a pedestrian shift uh, for access to the park, as you can see. Um, the south ramp and the south overpass sidewalk um, is closed at this point, um, as you can see on the map, and access is only along the north ramp, uh, which is the blue arrow there. So I have photos on the next photo we'll um, show you. We've been working on the signage and the, thank you, we've been working on the signage um, to help make pedestrians and users understand how the access works. It is tricky uh, due to the way this intersection is configured, um, again, with the many crosswalks um, kind of heading east-west and lack of crosswalks and signalized intersections um, heading you know, across Houston Street. 
Um, so we did install um, some more barriers and signage uh, throughout this week to help users and folks who wanna access the park understand that only um, access is only available from the north sidewalk on Houston Street and not the south sidewalk on Houston Street. So, um, you know, thank you for those who have, you know, reached out to let us know about the issues there. Um, we also have been working through it um, since, you know, kind of the end of last week into this week with our construction team to put more signage out there um, to move the bulletin board so that way folks had access to that as well. Um, and to, again, make people more aware of how this new um, pedestrian pattern of circulation will work for uh, for the time being. So um, so these are the photos of, of how it looks now, kind of on the left, the top left um, is again, along Houston Street, along that Southern sidewalk, um, where we have a lot of signage that informs folks not to um, access the park through that, that sidewalk. Um, and then some photos along the bottom of kind of after you get off the sidewalk, uh, the construction entrance has moved up so that uh, that area of the greenway is now closed. Um, and then the portion of the greenway that is along the slip ramp um, is now has a channelized uh, kind of approach for pedestrians in that area, again, to make sure that pedestrians and the construction vehicles don't um, overlap. Um, so, you know, we, we have been working on making this a little bit easier uh, to understand. And I do think, again, once folks get used to how that this new pattern works, it will be um, easier, but we are happy to take, um, you know, any comments and suggestions as well. Um, next, thank you. So also at Houston Street, um, the, uh, the, the paint on the railing there um, will need to be abated. Um, so there is uh, lead paint. So we are working very carefully. Again, the public safety, safety is of utmost priority. Um, similar to when we had to remove the Delancey Street Bridge, um, the third party um, sub consultant that is certified in um, lead abatement comes in and they set up that whole um, that whole process of safely removing uh, the sections of the of the um, ramp that do have lead. So that work is what you you will see um, happening. And uh, we did send that out in the mass mailing, uh, this statement here, but we wanted to include it today as well. For East 10th Street construction activities, um, we did present to um, Nitra Reese, uh, I guess a couple of months ago now. And this is one of the slides. It's uh, just slightly updated and we'll send that over um, as well. Uh, but but for the most part, nothing has changed. Um, at that point, the Con Ed electrical work had not started. So it was potential Con Ed electrical work. Um, now the Con Ed electrical work has started. Um, so that's the current work that's happening at East 10th Street. Um, and then at the, you know, towards the end of the summer, fall, um, we will start the kind of deep sewer work in this area. Um, after that, uh, the uh, the new sewer would be installed. That's heading into 2024, um, and then not until 2025 would the work on the um, East 10th Street Bridge, the demolition and the construction of that begin. So I know folks were asking for a bit of a look ahead here and we hadn't presented it at the community board meeting or at a CAG meeting. Um, so we did wanna include that slide. Um, this is the photo here is a photo of the air monitor that's currently installed at the circle. Um, that was another question that had come up with, our, with the NYCHA REITS residents um, and we do, coordinate very closely with Ms. Williams and some of the other um, folks there on a weekly basis, um, you know, with the, with the work that's happening there and to deliver uh, the bulletins and the advisories. Um, and again, if, if other um, buildings and residents in the area need uh, and printed copies of any of the materials that we have, our wonderful community construction liaisons can facilitate that as well. Um, so we understand that there have been some concerns about um, the environmental compliance, especially around East 10th Street, um, given what 
what NYCHA is um, experiencing now with the work that they're doing, um, which is separate than the Eastside Coastal Resiliency work. Um, so we did want to speak to that a little bit. Um, the environmental compliance in general, and this slide was presented um, in, I think, January of, of 2021. Um, there is multi-tiered environmental oversight uh, between the city agencies, city and state agencies, the PMCM and the environmental subconsultants. Um, as mentioned, soil was sampled during the design phase. Those soil samples have been included in um, the EIS. Um, so there is, and you'll see that on the next slide. Um, and then the contractor screens and samples soil prior to excavation to determine how the soils are exposed of. Um, if there is evidence of contamination, there are screening, um, screening guidelines and this photo ionization detector, uh, which is called a PID, is used to um, also test the soil. And again, all the work that we do on the project is in conformance with the city, state, and federal laws for monitoring, handling, and disposal of soils, all types of soils. Um, so we just wanted to include this slide um, again to speak to that. Um, and then Parker, you can go to the next slide. Thank you so much. Um, so again, as I mentioned in January 21 at the CB3 meeting and at the CAG meeting in, uh, number four, number four, so long ago, <laughs> um, we did speak to the EIS chapters, which included the language of um, MGPs. So MGPs are manufactured gas products. Again, if you have um, been to the, I, I think it was the CB3 environmental meeting um, and some of the Nitro Reese meetings, uh, there are MGPs within the um, northern portion of uh, the Reese houses and the northern portion of East River Park. Um, again, they're, they're known that they're there uh, from uh, petroleum waste um, that was in the area prior to the park being built. Um, so this is not something that it, you know, is a surprise to anyone. There are specifications and a memorandum of agreement with between the city of New York and DEC for protocols around MGPs. Um, so this is something that, that everyone is aware of. And as we get into that section of the project, um, then you know, those protocols will be implemented. Um, it, it enacts a mitigation work plan where a third party environmental monitoring consultant comes in and activates a camp, which is a community air monitoring program, which includes additional air and VOC monitoring. VOCs are volatile organic compounds um, that are typically associated with these manufactured gas products. So there is, again, a whole process of what happens when we enter into areas um, where the soil has been tested for MGPs. Um, so there are two chapters on hazardous materials. Um, chapter 5.7 is the hazardous materials chapter, which speaks to um, the, the existing findings. And then the 6.6 .6 is hazardous materials during construction. So, um, you know, that we wanted to include those resources here um, and just make everybody uh, aware that, again, you know, we are aware um, and we have discussed in the beginning of the project, which was so long ago, um, you know, how important it is that the handling of soils, uh, you know, is taken seriously and that it is included into this contract. Um, these are, we just included some of these mitigation techniques for air, and then the next one is for soil, um, just as resources, but we have gone over these in the past as well. Um, so just for the, what we've heard for um, Eastside Coastal Resiliency, PA1 and PA2, um, there was a previous question about whether or not the wick drains remain in the ground and they do to facilitate the compaction process once the fill is brought in. Um, and then we do have an archeology span update. Um, so the field investigation work is nearing completion. Um, we have been coordinating with the Landmarks Preservation Commission, the LPC. Um, so after the field work is completed, uh, a public outreach and mitigation plan will be reviewed, excuse me, and approved per the programmatic agreement. 
Um, once approved, the construction can proceed again. And then a final archaeology report, which I think folks have been asking for, um, may take about 18 to 24 months to become public due to the size and complexity of the project. Um, so we are working with LPC to give the most up-to-date um, you know, project updates in regards to archaeology, um, is, you know, when we have them, uh, pedestrian signage, uh, we're working on procuring the additional signage for East 10th Street. So hopefully um, that signage will be in place before the next CB3 meeting. Um, and we're looking at uh, how long that work at Delancey Street is going to take as well to see what we can do um, over there. So that is it for PA1 and PA2. And then I think Parker is going to jump into um, PC. Yes. Do you, should we do questions on PA1 and PA2 first, or do you want to just go finish going through all of PC? And then... how, how many slides do you have for PC? There's only two slides it, for PC. Yeah. Let, let's do PC. Let's do PC. Okay. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, this is an overview of the different locations for the parallel conveyance sewer work. Um, most of the work, uh, the, the contractor is planning to start at the southernmost area, so down uh, by this one, so Water, Jackson Street, um, near Corley Sook Park, and then move north. Um, mostly the contractor has been doing subsurface investigations via test pits, which are just excavating to locate exactly where the utilities are, um, because the first phase in the work flow is to upgrade the utilities before doing the deep sewer work. Um, and these mostly have impacts of um, uh, limiting parking, uh, curbside parking, and occasional traffic pattern changes. Um, and so, yes, so as I mentioned, first uh, they do the test pits and site survey, and then now they're uh, about to start doing the utility upgrades and relocations in advance of the deep sewer work, which will expand the sewer capacity uh, for the protected zone. And that's all for PC right now, but we can take questions about all three of those contracts before going to BMCR. Right. Thank you, Parker and Desiree. As I mentioned before, we'll first go to committee members and then uh, uh, folks who are in attendance as community members. I just want to say thank you for giving that update. I think it's very helpful to, to get some facts out there and also to refresh uh, memories. I know a lot of stuff gets spread information that, you know, is either outdated or just people just don't know. So I, I thank you for including those in slides. And, and uh, well, I'll go to David. Catherine and then Robin in that order. So David, go first. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm a resident of East River Housing, and I we've had a problem with one building. That we it's on the north side of Grand, right next to the park. Yeah. They've had multiple gas leaks. They have to really we have, and I was concerned that maybe the pounding or something was shifting. Could have resulted in the weakening of the uh, construction of, of the um, of the gas lines to that building. Hmm. Um, David, I'm not aware of that, but we can take that back to our team um, and see if you know if they know anything about it. Um, I but we we have not heard anything in regards to the to gas leaks in that area. Um, but we could certainly bring that back. Okay. You could also submit an inquiry on our uh, on this page here if you go to the contact, just so that way we could respond to you directly. Um, you know, with with that follow up, or I could send it to Susan, um, and maybe she could send send you back. But um, if you'd like to submit a, a direct inquiry or, um, yeah, or send I mean, you an email, people, people you're not using gas in that building, right? Because a multi-million, it could be a multi-million dollar project for us. Sure. Like I said, I, I'm not aware of that, but we could certainly bring that back, back to the team and see if, if others are. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dave. Also, I want to remind folks, if Desiree, if you could repeat that, I know we have how many CCLs for ESCR and PC? Yeah, we have um, 
three C, uh, four CCLs. We have one CCL for project area one, two for project, no, sorry, one for project area two, two for project area one, and one for parallel conveyance. Um, Con Ed, Con Ed inspectors are also always on site when we're doing, when because the Con Ed work is Con Ed. So, um, you know, again, we haven't heard anything and uh, Con Ed hasn't um, mentioned anything as well, to, you know, that we're aware of, but we could certainly, again, bring that back. Um, and again, if figure out which CCL would be best, but we have many CCLs on site that uh, are out in the field also when the work is getting done. So we'll pass that along. All right, thank you. I just wanted to highlight that because I know people uh, have issues and I think, I don't know how often your inquiry tool is used or how often the CCLs are contacted, but I think daily. That, that should be the first daily. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we, I mean, right, we check you. it daily, so it's right. always monitored. Catherine? Okay. Um, just so you know, Desiree, the um, Desiree, the address is 475 FD. Our drive is the building that is, doesn't have gas. That's 475 FDR drive. Okay. Yeah. Although it was, shit. No. Yeah. It's kind of shaky because there was a problem internally, but you know it's worth checking out. Um, okay. Also, on the parallel conveyances, working backwards. Um, when you said you were doing test pits um, and you're surveying it, I, you said you're doing test pits to see what else is down there in various and sundry lines. Um, well, you're doing the test pits. How deep are they? And are they also checking the soil condition for like contaminants and VOCs and things like that? Um, the I'm not sure how far the test pits go. I think it depends on which utilities they're looking for because the depths of the utilities vary. Um, so, um, you know, I get it depends on how deep that utility is. Electric lines are higher, um, sewer and water lines are lower. Um, because the soil is going back into um, the, you know, it's there's only a little bit of soil that's removed and then it's put back. Um, I'm not 100% sure on which, what tests are done on that soil, um, but I could get back to you on that. Yeah, because if they're not che checking for toxins or VOCs or whatever, I'd like to make a request that they do that because given the number of different sites that have been popping up um, and given it seems like a lot of this whole east side of Manhattan was formerly industrial uses, it might be I'm sorry, my voice is scratchy. Uh, it might be a good idea. And I know, as a matter of fact, since that's our, the edge of our old parking lot at East River, there that was also an area that was flooded mm -hmm. um, during Sandy, actually one of the, the few areas that did flood in East River. So just mentioning that. So I had a okay. couple of que other questions. First mm -hmm. one is you the signs that you have around Houston Street um, they're all in English. Are you doing Chinese and Spanish as well? Uh, that's a great question. We can certainly look to expand those as well. Yeah, because I think that would be a good idea given the composition of the neighborhood. It'd be nice if you could make them bigger too. Um, you also said something was going on. I, I mentioned when you first started, you said there was some work that was being done, I think 15th Street and Avenue C. 15th Street and Avenue C. Yeah, that area. Oh, by the Con Ed, oh, and PA2. Right, sorry. Yeah. Because, because they the, the state environmental office, whatever, just this month declared the 14th Street by Avenue C is a brownfield site. So I don't know if they're coordinating that. I know you mentioned the other MPGs or whatever, so I don't know. Just pointing out that that's an apparently they just declared it a brownfield site, so you might want to check into that and make sure everything is being coordinated. Okay, we'll we'll note that. Okay, and let's see. Oh, also speaking of posting at Houston Street, are you gonna? Did you post about the lead abatement so people don't go crazy when they see lead abatement going on? We have posted signs that say, ask your CCL, you know, contact your CCL if you have questions about the work that's being done. I don't think we specifically posted 
the lead abatement statement on, you know, at, on the site. Yeah, it might be helpful because the community board is going to be getting calls and those of us who work with the park are going to hear about it. So it might head off some, you know, some anxiety in the part of the residents who live there. And then my last question is the, um, the Corlears Hook Park, you said that they're about to finish the archaeological dig and you'll probably start on construction. Who actually makes that, that decision and who signs the agreement? Sure. So I'm, I believe, you know, it's, it's Landmarks Preservation Commission. We, we had an update that had all of the agencies. It's Landmarks Preservation Commission. I think it's SHPO. Then it's the, um, the, I believe it's the historic tribes that are in the area. Um, that I said part. Delaware. Uh, yeah. So there's, there's a, a group of folks, I think, that need to sign off on it. I can get the details on exactly who signs off on that, you know, the specific, because I know those are the parties that review the work and the report and, you know, the archaeological work that's going on. I'm not sure who specifically signs off on yeah, the education the plan. Final, or who and, makes the final decision. Yeah, I believe LPC has a very strong lead mm -hmm. in, in that. Um, that's who we're coordinating with on all of, you know, on the responses and some of the updates. So I, I imagine they're kind of taking the lead on this. Um, but I could find out a little bit more detail on that. Yeah, I mean, because I was at the earlier meeting, but I was just, it wasn't clear exactly who made, who makes the final agreement or how if they all have to agree or all have to sign off. So if you sure. can get on that, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I think Robin was next. Trevor. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. For I just wanted to make sure because I think sometimes this gets lost of when people ask questions, and they're they're not. There's no way to get back to Catherine. So I don't know if Catherine wants to directly contact or put her her statements in the uh, inquiry to, or if you want to respond directly back to us, and we can respond to Catherine, or if you want to direct. Uh, By the way, Maude. I can. I mean, I can put my information in the chat room if you want. It's fine. Okay. Sure. Des Desiree, that's is that okay? okay? Sure, that's fine. Okay. All right. Great. So, Desiree, you can CC uh, the board back with the answers because yeah. I'm curious to, to her. She had some okay. very good questions, which I'm Great. curious to hear. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. So, yeah, thank Robin, you. Go ahead. Robin, go ahead. Hi. Um, hi, Desiree. I, I have a question also about the parallel conveyance. My computer's about, my phone's about to die. I'm trying to get my power. So, if I die in the middle, so that, that those are the the Lewis and Grand is that is that shifted over now? Like I, I thought it was at one point it was Broom Street was being talked about, as, or is that just where you're doing your testing on Delancey Lewis and Delancey? Parker, I'm going to let um, you respond to this as you have intimate knowledge. Of yes. <laughs> so the the Lewis, uh, yeah, they're only doing test pits. At, they've done test pits. Um, they're doing test pits at all of the locations and then starting the construction activities south and moving north. So they were doing test pits at um, Lewis and Grand um, and sort of Lewis between Grand and Delancey, I think it is. Uh, they were doing there, but um, they're not, they're starting the construction work in this area one on uh, this map, the first one. Yeah. So if area one, and then they'll move up, but we'll give notice for any, before any more, um, impactful work happens, uh, um, at any of the other locations. It would be great to, uh, I mean, the Hillman buildings and like the Hillman buildings and the East River buildings, it would be kind of amalgamated. It would be great to get the management companies involved. So everyone mm -hmm. can have a notice of the new building about when this stuff is happening. Okay. There's, there's so much construction. All these buildings are going through um, resurfacing and the bricks, there's scaffolding everywhere. My has been in the neighborhood. There's like everything is being dug up. So if we could get notice before you guys start doing the work, like mm -hmm. through our management companies, I know you have contact with them, right? Yeah. So, that would be great. Um, okay, yeah, we'll be sure to. You know, if there's going to be traffic, like, I, and I didn't get the dates, or I missed something on when these pits are going to be dug. I didn't. So we do send out the, uh, it, when it's impacting the parking and if it were to impact traffic patterns, we issue advisories um, in advance and they're also posted to our website. If you wanna 
be on the distribution list for those. Um, and I'll make sure I'll talk to our CCL Tanya for the project and make sure that Hillman management's on it too. But if you'd like, um, I'll be, we'll be sure to share her contact information after, but it's also on the PC page of our website. Okay, that would be great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks Robin. Daniel? Uh, thanks. Uh, so I had two things. One is about the Houston Street. Um, we really have to do better to uh, equally inconvenience cars and and pedestrians while this type of work is happening. Um, because it essentially, when you just inconvenience the pedestrians that are crossing into the park, it essentially makes it not accessible. And then the park is essentially closed if people are afraid to go in there because of construction vehicles, regular vehicles. So we got to think of more creative ways to allow people to get into the parts of the parks that are open. Um, and then the second thing is we have, uh, we are starting to get the trees, uh, street trees that I think are a part of this overall project. Um, and they, it's great. We're getting trees in places on Rivington Street uh, that they told us we couldn't have trees, a million trees. So uh, it's really great. Uh, and some of these are really nice, tall, like 10, 12 foot tall trees with good canopy shade. So I am hoping that when we replant the new park that you can get some of these, uh, they're like four caliper, four inch caliper, like uh, tall uh, elm and hybrid elms and like good shade trees that I hope that you can plant those similar trees when the park opens. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Des Desiree, is, is DOT on? And... Uh, DOT was supposed to be on and they had to last minute cancel, um, but we can try to make sure that they're on for the next meeting. Yeah, I, I want to uh, focus on what Daniel said about the that particular overpass to see if we can come up with something uh, that doesn't really inconvenience. I mean, uh, the signs are helpful, but it's a it's it's still a tricky area. Um, yeah. but I'd like to see if we can set up something with DOT to see if we can think about something else. And I also want to echo his, I did see some trees planted near where I live, and they, I've never seen trees that that type. Uh, usually they're very skinny and, and and small, but these were actually 10 to 12 foot and, and had a nice caliper. But And we hope to see those in the super park. So I just want to echo what Daniel said. Great. Committee we can members. Get the park to see where they where they procured them from. <laughs> Committee members, any more questions? All right, let me pull this up and give me a minute because I am also facilitating the Zoom portion here. So let's give me one second. Um, I see two questions from attendees and I don't really want to use that name, but that's what Zoom calls you uh, from our neighbors. So I'll start with Lee, then Tommy, then Diane. So let me go to the. Lee, go ahead. Hi, Trevor. Thank you. Hi, Desiree. Uh, thanks for being here. Two quick things. One, to echo what Robin said uh, about requests for um, the, the notifications, for example, about uh, parking or construction, for example, on Lewis Street. Um, if you could be more forceful with management companies down there. Um, it, it's, you know, I've been posting them uh, on our own Facebook page, uh, only to find that residents have not, have, have, have no idea, um, that this is being done. You know, for example, that there will be limited parking, uh, on Lewis street, uh, because of construction, et cetera. So if you're able to, to request that rather than just putting it up in one place in the building that they distributed via email, uh, to their listservs, that would be great. Um, and very helpful. And then the other thing is we're, we're almost three years into this and it was very disconcerting to see your photos of the signage on Houston Street, as Catherine mentioned, only in English. Um, it, it's, you guys have to do much better. It's, we know that there are other folks here uh, we, that speak other languages, predominantly Spanish and Chinese. And to not have any of those way signs, 
um, at House and Street in any of those other languages, um, really, it, it, it says a lot. So please do better on that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And we can, of course, you know, we will um, we will speak with the contractor and DDC about getting those larger signs posted. Um, we do have the advisories are always posted. The advisories that the community engagement team um, puts out are always posted in the three languages in English, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, so those are posted. Um, but the larger construction signs, we will, you know, take that back to the team and see what the protocol on that is. I've personally not seen larger construction signs translated. Um, but again, that's not to say that it can't be done, but we'll bring that back. Um, and then the, the bulletin board that we have is kind of our main um, source of information. Everything that is, or, or all the advisories that are on there are also translated in the three languages. Right, right. But the, the, yeah, the specific, the so safety large, ones, you yeah, know, the ones yeah. that says cross yeah. over to the north because yeah. it's dangerous over here, only being in English doesn't, doesn't help. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, we'll bring that back. Thank you. So Tommy, and keep in mind that I'm not doing a two minute clock unless I feel I need to. Uh, Tommy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Um, two, two or three questions. Number one, on the parallel conveyance, um, just a quick one. When you do the water main replacement, does that involve shutting off water to the residential buildings which surround the parallel conveyance? Um, that's one question. The other is uh, some of us attended the most recent Reese House uh, update this week, and we all learned, at least I did a new term, and that's cold tar migration. And we learned that as part of the ESCR, and I don't know now, Desiree, whether it was part of the original plan or it's now been added to the plan, but because the, as you said, the um, combi wall is being done, which seals off the river, the coal tar used to flow into the river from uh, under Reese and under other areas of uh, the, the area there. And now they're putting in, I think it's 10 or 12 wells to collect the coal tar, but that's only in the area which is part of a previous agreement with Con Ed. And it's basically between 10th and 13th Street, I think. But we have no information or testing on the streets or areas just to the south of that regarding coal tar. Since it's been 60, 70, 80 years, it may have migrated to other areas besides just Reese houses. So the parallel conveyance and the coal tar, Thank you. Sure. So I will address the the coal tar, the MGPs. Um, the in the EIS, the areas of MGPs, which include the northern part of East River Park, which is what I had mentioned before, were delineated during pre-construction. So those areas are known, and the um, wells will be installed in that northern portion of the park in the MGP area. So it's not new to the to the mitigation work. It is um, it was in the contract and the um, Reese housing that was part of New York State DEC brownfield work. So that's uh, that's one contract and then there's work associated with our contract. And then Parker, I don't know if you wanted to speak to um, oh well the with water main work, there's you know always the the potential of there being um, water main shutdowns again to facilitate that work. Um, as some people on the call know, um, we have been having to do the water main shutdowns in areas through the project um, again to to facilitate that work. So, with notice, which Parker will talk about, um, if you want to just hold on uh, for a little bit, Parker will talk about the. Um, uh, water shutdown process, um, and that's in the BMCR slides. Uh, Trevor, do you want to take the, uh, Tommy? I hope that answered your questions. And it, if, uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to multitask. And 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, Diane. Let me just go to Diane. Give me a second, Diane. Sorry. Okay, Diane. Okay. Thank you, Trevor. Hi, Desiree. Thank you for jumping on the Houston intersection issues. I think, you know, I was one of the people um, raising concerns about that. Um, in addition to the excellent suggestions about uh, larger signage, multi-language signage, and looking at the traffic patterns with DOT, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if someone from DOT can explain why that center island on the south there so you know you start crossing you mm -hmm. cross the, the southbound lane and then you're on that island before you cross the northbound lane why that's not completely blocked off uh, because i think from what i've seen and and i just checked it again this evening um what people are doing is they're not noticing the problem they're either not reading the signage or not understanding it and they're getting across on that island and then the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and you know walk out into the traffic yeah. um and i've seen a lot of people do that over the last few days so if that could be blocked off or if dot could do something about that i think that would also be very discouraging and would help establish the new pattern faster so i just wanted to suggest that yeah, that's that's a great suggestion, and it is something that we did discuss um, as well. And we're, that that conversation is still ongoing. Um, it just right leads to the question of if if it's completely closed, then do people still kind of cross that crosswalk and then can't access it? So we we are going to keep having conversations with we we have an ongoing conversation with DOT right now um, about this area. And we will work with them to figure out what is what is the best um, solution here because that is a, an issue there. Great, so, because there's there's still a lot of people making that southern crossing, um, even with the increased signage. So it obviously yes. needs to be worked on some more. Thank you. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Lee, did you still have your hand up or you had I, something else? I, I did. Just just to follow up to something that Desiree said about the, the manufactured gas uh, products. Desiree, the EIS also indicated um, that there were other locations in ESCR um, with uh, manufactured uh, gas products and coal tar, for example, at Broome and Delancey Street. Um, and we're unsure of where that will be migrating. If it's going east towards the closed off river, there don't appear to be any pits or wells planned for that area. Um, and as well as whether or not there'll be that those underground uh, products will be coming south and or west. Do you have any information on that? I don't. I could check on that. Um, I've been aware of, again, the area in the northern portion of the park, but we can check on that and get back to you on that. Appreciate I did it. just want to also clarify that, you know, before any major excavation work is done in any part of the project, the soil is tested. So again, test bits are a little different and I'll find out about that, you know, but from the previous PA1, you know, excavation for the first part, uh, phase one, you know, there is, there was, um, you know, there is the, the soil sampling for testing the grid of soil, you know, before major excavation is completed. So I just wanted to reiterate that um, as well. All right, thank you, Desiree. All right, and thank you. And Parker, you could now move on to BMCR. Great, thank you, everyone. Um, so I'm gonna give an update on BMCR. And this is an overview of what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, a few of the new things from last month are that we're going to highlight the, the uh, construction timeline. Um, and then also the we're going to go over the water shutdown notification process, which is this will be the same notification process for parallel conveyance as well um, to answer Tommy's earlier question. So this is an overview of the BMCR project area and the flood protection design. I think a lot of you are familiar with um, this slide and these renderings. Um, but if you want to see more renderings of what the project design is, we have those on our website on the about page. Um, and so this is an overview of the project status. Um, 
up until now, the contractor's primarily been doing pre-construction surveys, exploratory test pits, which are the excavations to locate the subsurface utilities, uh, distribution water main upgrades, and continuing to develop the construction schedule and work sequencing. Uh, coming up, we have the contractor is about to start flood wall construction, which is exciting. Um, and then more utility relocation and upgrades in advance of the sewer work um, that is going to take place later, which you'll see in the schedule or in the timeline. Um, we are always coordinating with the other with the east side coastal resiliency teams we know that at montgomery street it's where a lot of different contracts are intersecting so we are ensuring that the uh, program management construction management teams are in coordination with each other um, we also coordinate with edc who is doing construction in the southern portion of our project area near the bridge and actually related to that you may have noticed that at the Brooklyn under the Brooklyn Bridge, the construction fencing um, area was reduced in size. About a hundred more feet of esplanade is available at down by the Brooklyn Bridge, and that was because EDC had completed some restoration work that they were doing there, so we could reduce the size of the construction fencing. Um, and we also coordinate with DOT um, for any traffic pattern changes and bike pattern and pedestrian pattern changes, um, which we'll get, we can talk more about. Uh, these are some examples of the advisories we have for BMCR. Um, we post them around site when necessary. We also post them to our website um, and distribute them to people who are impacted. And if you'd like to receive these, uh, feel free to contact Marsha, our CCL, whose contact information is on the last slide of this presentation, and she will add you to her distribution list. So this is the project timeline that I was talking about. Uh, as you can see, the project starts with distribution water main work. So we're replacing the old water main or distribution main with new water mains, which I have more details on later. Um, prior to the trunk main replacement. Um, the trunk main is the larger pipe that carries water between neighborhoods, whereas the distribution main is the one that actually connects up to the buildings. Um, we also will be doing utility work in advance of the bulk of the work, which is the sewer capacity improvements and interceptor gate building uh, down by the bridge flood wall and flood gates. Um, and as you can see here, the, the project should reach substantial completion by the end of 2026. And I'm happy to take questions on this later. We can come back to this slide. So as I mentioned, uh, the contractor is replacing the 100 year old 12 inch distribution main. Uh, this takes place prior to the trunk main replacement. All of our water main work is coordinated with the city's Department of Environmental Protection, which manages the water mains. Um, so far, the contractors replaced the distribution main between Market Slip and Pike Slip, which is shown on this map in green. The contractor still needs to make new connections um, at Pike Slip and Rutgers, where the purple circles are, um, and that may require another shutdown, but then the contractor will continue moving in either direction along South Street. So this is the water shutdown notification process that we follow for any water shutdowns related to our projects. Um, so we try to give as much advance notice as possible. Um, and that starts with, uh, we aim for two weeks prior to any shutdown, we notify the elected officials for an area and the community boards that there's going to be water main work uh, that will require a shutdown. We also, th at the same time, try to distribute the community advisory, um, advising people that there will be water, uh, water shutdowns happening, even if we don't know exactly what buildings will be affected yet. Uh, then 72 hours prior to the shutdown, we issue the 72 hour shutdown advisory to the potentially affected buildings. We provide that to the management of the buildings. Um, and that 72 hour advisory provides the anticipated 
uh, time frame for the work. So, you know, if there were, it's going to, in this example, for up to five days, and it gives the work hours, um, you know, there are emergencies and it can go, things can, things can change, but we try to give as much information as we can prior. And then for each of the shutdowns within the seven, the period outlined on the 72 hour advisory, we issue the DEP official 24 hour shutdown notice. Um, and that is given to building management and posted uh, in the buildings. Ultimately, it is up to the building management to notify residents. However, if you want to be on Marsha's, our CCL, uh, Marsha's distribution list, uh, you can reach out to her. Her email address will be on the next slide. Um, and, and so... The, and once we get the inquiry tool up and running for this project, we'll also be sure to issue these notices via that. And so I'll be sure to notify you once that is fully up and running. As I mentioned, here's Marsha's contact information. Um, we did a tabling event uh, back in April. Um, that's a photo of Marsha and I uh, near Rutgers slip near where the uh, workout equipment is. We are looking to do more tabling events in the community and are open to suggestions on, you know, locations. Uh, we and we we always make sure to have um, you know Joyce present if she's available so that we can have translation. Um, and then uh, I think, yeah, as the inquiry tools coming soon. I think that's all for right now. I can take questions. I'm happy to go back to any slides. Great, thank you, Parker. Uh, I'm just going to look for committee members first. See me. So I'll just ask a few questions that I didn't ask at the last meeting. Um, several apartments here have uh, air quality monitors in their apartment, and the VOC monitors are going off the charts, and we don't know why. Um, now we do live next to the FDR, and there's a lot of construction and and building work going on. Um, do you know where the air quality monitors are installed for this project? Um, I don't know where they are. I can bring that back and find out. Um, I do know that they're doing air quality monitoring and all of the required environmental monitoring for the project. Mm -hmm. And whenever, if they see, you know, if they were to see dust or if one of the air quality monitors was to go off, they would have to stop work and address the problem before continuing. Um, and I, also, this BMCR is not doesn't have the same disclosure requirements that ESCR has, so we don't we don't do the same reporting public reporting at as Yesker does at the CAG. But um, I will. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna ask you for that information, and and only because I mean, the, we've had there are quite a number of monitors around my building for various reasons, and some of them are installed by community-based organizations, but we never had the VOCs go off like they're going off. And mm -hmm. This is a daily basis, and it's hard to tell what it is because right. it just comes off as a VOC above the limit. So if you could provide that information. Yes, yeah, and yeah. do you know where, if there's like a specific location that is a problem, or is it just all along? Well, I'm only talking about my building, which is at Rutgers and okay. South Street. Uh, as yes. you know, we front the FDR and most of the work is going on uh, in that area. So if you could just get that information and yep. you can correlate it and find out if it's the result of this or something else. Yes. Uh, the the uh, We understand parking is limited and that's understandable, but buses, especially the ones that go down to Wall Street, don't think it's limited. So we're still seeing an influx of buses now that they see an open stretch of of street which although it says no parking they can idle there for hours so if we can figure out a way to get the buses off of south street i know that their parking is also limited but we're, we're we have been absorbing the brunt of four buses and mta buses for years and we really like to see them to be honest get out of this area especially it designated as environmental justice area i just don't think we should have buses in addition to construction along South Street. Um, I think that's it. Oh, Catherine has her hand up. So Catherine, go ahead. Thanks. Um, yeah, very quickly. Um, I was, when you 
when you said about uh, when you were mentioning about the water main uh, shutdowns, mm-hmm. and did you say something about signing up for it, or do you just put them in the various lobbies, or how so, do you do that? So we we um we are in communication and coordination with the building managements, um, but anyone who wants to receive these notifications, um, you can email Marsha. Um, her email is right here. Um, it's also on our website. And she will add you to her distribution list. She sends out updates every Friday with advisories um, and bullet, uh, construction bulletins, uh, similar to the ones that are released for ESCR. So, um, and then once we do have the inquiry tool up and running, we will share that um, with everyone who's on her list and obviously report it here. Okay, and one other quick question. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there was a proposal for a, um, there was a group, a not-for-profit that was that came forward with a proposal for a park around the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, is that, is, are you working with them or is any of that included in this plan? Are you so, aware of it? I, I have heard of the proposal, but um, they are, I, we, we, they're not in the construction or phase. I, and I, I know that they've, they've presented at CB1, um, but we, we aren't coordinating with them because they're not at the point of construction. And our work is only just, I'll, I'll include, I'll include next time a rendering of what the work is at the Brooklyn Bridge. It's because that's where our project area ends. So we have a flood wall that basically ties into the one of the FDR off ramps. Um, but mo- the the bulk of the project is really under the FDR along the Esplanade. Um, so I don't I wouldn't anticipate this our project conflicting. Okay. I was just curious because I know CB1 was very much in favor of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to look for other community members to see if they have any questions. I don't see any. Um, just to explain to folks, that, and and, and um, you may have, Parker, you may have a better, uh, or your partner may have a better uh, count of how many meetings we've had on this, because I know you're relatively new, but we, we are trying to stay as current and give people as much information as we can while we also balance the needs of other agenda items. Uh, so we will meet as needed. Right now we're meeting every month. There's a CAG, uh, or meeting every other month. There's a CAG meeting every month. We also go to CD6. Uh, we're probably four years into this. Um, so just for folks to be aware of that, uh, we will meet as needed. If it's more frequent, then we'll meet more frequent. But right now, we're going to go to every other month, uh, depending on what the topic is. So just so everyone's informed of that. Um, but thank you for that update. Um, it's 7.51. Too bad, I hope. Um, thank you all so much. All right, thank you. So the next agenda item and I have to attempt to share my screen. So give me a minute, but Susan, you can start. I think so many people have heard this so much time and next month we'll actually have new members. So we'll go into it, but Mm. just a very um, brief overview of the process for district needs and budget priorities. Um, We start now looking up to update our district needs statement and budget priorities. And we will vote in October. And that will be for the budget with agencies starting in July 2024. Um, We will attempt to finalize the district needs statement in July so that we can then go on to work on the budget priorities. And the district needs is an assessment. Um, There's always a tendency to want to write policy. It's not a policy paper, it's an assessment of our needs and hopefully leads into what our priorities will be. And we try to document as much as possible and um, the statistics you see currently, um, the office pretty much dates pretty much all of them. Um, And 
so for the district needs statement, which would have been nice if we'd sent out the section to everybody in advance, but we didn't. Um, but you will get it after this meeting. And Trevor, you'll decide um, how you want to proceed with updating it, um, possibly have everyone read it before the next meeting and come prepared with any updates, changes, additions, uh, you know, whatever you think. Um, the capital and expense priorities for the full board, we have 40 capital priorities and 25 expense. Um, it's great competition to get in the 25 expense, which for parks are important items, um, such as staffing, playground associates, um, uh, the police peace officers. Um, the capital budget, we always have enough. It's uh, the 40 priorities are always almost all parks and we can always get everything in. Um, the competition there is to rank them. And uh, Trevor and I have been in the process of scheduling a meeting um, with Council Member Marte for the last several weeks um, to talk to him about the priorities from last year because they will be implemented, um, hopefully some of them in the budget starting in July. Um, and I think that's sort of an overview if there's not any questions. And if we could look at the budget priorities, um, it might be helpful. These are the responses from the executive budget um, to our priorities, which just came out a few weeks ago. So if you wanna show those, Trevor. Yeah, where is the share screen function or do I have- um, Let me see, it should be under, Hmm. Whoops, sorry. Oh, it should be on the bottom. I see in the next to the raise hand, I see share screen on the bottom. Between the chat and the raise hand. Got it. Which one do you want first? Um, I think we could just look at the budget priorities. And I'll say the unusual thing about parks is the only agency that doesn't have a budget um, to uh, to implement the priorities. And they generally go to council members. Um, I'm sure Catherine can talk about that. They generally go to council members and other elected officials and other um, sources to raise money. But the priority for the parks, um, the community board's priorities weigh very much into um, the priorities um, that are funded. And just to keep in mind, we do this every year. I mean, some things change, but a lot of things don't because obviously the parks that we have that have needs are still going to stay there unless they're funded for another source. Uh, oops. So these are phase three. Phase yep. three. And if you'll see the answers on the right, so um, on the left hand side, it's, I'm going to say the the way they format this is not great, um, but you'll see at the, um, for number one, right above the line going, this is Pier 42. And we asked for more funding for Pier 42. And they said, it's recommended you take this request to your elected officials. Um, the next one, if you could just scroll up a little bit, because I can't even see. Oh, it's the next one is Allen Pike Malls. Um, and says Office of Management Budget supports um, the agency's position, um, contact the community board unit at OMB. So the answers everybody says are not very helpful. And in the last year, there's been this network that has formed of uh, the 59 boards and the district managers have been meeting with some agencies and we've been meeting with um, city planning and Office of Management Budget. And one of the top complaints was about the very poor quality and non-responsiveness of their answers. And they have, they seem to be listening and they have promised for the next budget um, to give us a more clarity and more information um, in, in the answers. Um, so our 
And I also say every year, Trevor and I meet with the Parks Department and go get an update on the funding, what has been funded. Um, and I believe there has been some funding um, since the uh, last year. Um, so we always find out what has been funded. Um, Susan, are there other, I'm gonna scroll down and see if there's other uh, responses which are different than these two. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, most so of them are yes. policy or elected official. Yes, and if you go to the very end, then we'll have the expense ones that we did. Okay, go keep going. You should, the, is that the last one? There you go, there's the expense. Um, so uh, forestry services to, um, because um, there's the agency recommends funding from this budget request, but availability of funds is uncertain. And that's, don't that's even the know. Other response. I don't know yeah. what to say about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a public safety issue. Um, then we have, um, let me see. It's the same answer. Yeah. yeah. Then the next one was for green thumb staff um, because they're not baseline. We asked to have that baseline. And then PAP, police, um, peace officers. And we did actually have more expense um, items that we wanted, but they dropped off the first 25. So I'll go to, to the next one. Oh. That should be it. No, the next. Oh, it's, so the next one is the district needs statement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you just want to send it to people, uh, to the committee and ask them to read and come next time with any changes that they might want to add, make. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll send it to the committee and they can take a look. Keep in mind that we do this every year um, so that we don't have to reinvent everything uh, when we do it. But I'll send it to everyone before the next meeting. And Susan, you mentioned we'll be getting new members. Uh, we should be getting new members, so we're going to have to kind of have the same discussion again next month, correct? They won't. They won't be in the committees yet, so they should be assigned any time. But we usually have a month where uh, they visit committees. And That's true. Yeah. So what we should do is urge people if they're interested to come to the committee meetings, even if they're not assigned, um, because you know. It, it's just late, it's, you know, it's a late appointment and there's nothing we can do about it. So we're just gonna have to, I guess, keep giving the explanation. Well, we have a pretty large committee, so I think we can handle it. We have 13 members or 12. All right, Susan, Mayor, that's it. Sure, go ahead, Kay. Um, you know, it's been pretty well publicized that um, the Parks Department, um, along with many other agencies, but since, as Susan said, Parks has no budget, that um, it's pretty draconian. So has has Parks made any suggestions about their wish list for, um, in particular, expenses? They will do that after July. They always like like to wait for the budget to be adopted, and then they'll meet with us in July and give us their wish list. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from committee members? No, that's it. I think we're going to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Brian, if you want to call us out for attendance purposes. Thank you, Susan, again, for that intro. Um, and we can adjourn the meeting on the final attendance uh, roll call. Brian Velez. Josephine Velez. Yes. Josephine. Okay. Yes. Daniel Taino. Yes. Robin Chattel. Oh. Yes. Valentina Jones. Yes. Catherine. Catherine. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Yes. Everyone's started to unmute, so we're getting a lot of feedback. But I heard Catherine say yes. Go ahead. Okay. Carlin Chan. Yes. Jerome Altman. Yes. David Adams. Say, which is yes backwards. <laughs> Ryan Gillum, yes. Hey Webster. Yes. Trevor Holland. 
Yes, present. Done. All right, thanks folks. With regards to where we'll be next month, please check with the community board or the website. I, I don't know where we're gonna be, but uh, I'll, I'll try and update, update you as much as, with much information as I get, but I won't know before the community board office will know. So please check. With them. Thanks everyone and good night. Good Thank night, you, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thanks. 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 Bye. Bye.